As preppers, we prepare our homes for the possibility of an emergency situation, but much of the time you spend is not at home. You're either at work, buying groceries, or out on other errands. What do you do if an emergency strikes and you're not at home? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. The critical plans, the critical items that you need to have in place in case emergency strikes while you're out. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. I recently did a video about the top seven things that I thought people should have prepared for the case of an emergency. A lot of those items were things that you'd want to have ready if you're at home. But as is oftentimes the case, we aren't always at home. And in this video, I wanted to talk about things you should have prepared for the case of an emergency that might begin while you're not at home, while you're at work, while you're out on errands, while you're somewhere where you're not at home. It's important to have the ability to get back home to get other people that are in your family, whether you have children at school or loved ones who are at some job somewhere. It's important to be able to get everyone back together, back to your home, so that if you have preparations at your house, people can actually get back there and utilize them. So for this video, what I wanna talk about is the idea of a get home bag and other materials, other information that you should have handy in the case of an emergency arising while you're not at home. What I have right next to me is something that probably looks to many people like a bug out bag, but this is actually my, this is my EDC pack. I take this pack with me whenever I leave the house. And I know it's pretty big, it's pretty bulky. A lot of people are gonna say, that's ridiculous. You're living in a paranoid state of uh, you know fear all the time, carrying all this stuff on your back all the time, but you know it's not that big of a deal, to be honest. I'm big into hiking and backpacking and uh, just carrying this with me around all the time. Now, when I go into the grocery store, this is kept in my in my car. I don't have it on on my back all the time. But whenever I'm you know out walking somewhere, whenever I you know certainly am, uh, out on a hike, I always have this on me. And there are a lot of benefits of having this on me, uh, and we're going to get into some of those. But one of the benefits that I think a lot of people just don't think about is the benefit of ha having your body be kind of trained for having this on your back all the time. A lot of times people have these emergency plans and they're just kind of thrown away in a closet somewhere. And if it ever came to actually implementing any of those things, well, you see what happens when there's a big major snowstorm and people have to shovel, people are having heart attacks. When there are situations where people have to walk somewhere, you know, they just, they don't have, uh, you know, the fluids that they need, they don't have the uh, physical endurance they need, and people just can't execute the plans that they have kind of made in their head, but those plans kind of never took the rest of their body into account. So the fact that I carry this with me all the time, it keeps me in a constant state of being prepared to carry this on my back. Uh, in, in addition to that, it's just regular exercise. So, you know, there's a benefit there. Uh, and on top of that, there are all sorts of things in here that I use all the time on a regular day-to-day -day basis. One of them being, just have water with you all the time. In fact, my mouth's feeling a little dry right now. So having something like this, you know, I don't have to wait for there to be some kind of like crazy uh, situation like an earthquake or a flood or something like that. You know, you get thirsty on an, uh, an ongoing basis. In fact, that is like one of the biggest issues that I have with so many comments that come in uh, on a lot of my videos where people talk about, oh, you preppers, you're just living in fear. Nothing ever happens. I don't know about you, but I've gotten thirsty before. You know, that's actually happened. I've got food in here. I don't know about you, but sometimes I get hungry. Uh, you know, I've got bandages in there and, uh, you know, a, a medical kit for treating scrapes and wounds. In fact, on my foot this morning, I stubbed my toe and I treated my toe injury. So the idea that, you know, preppers live in fear and none of this stuff ever happens, it happens on like like a daily basis i'm you know going into this pack for things and you know even the bigger stuff you know people talk about you know that earthquakes never happen floods never happen hurricanes never happen tornadoes never happen uh, uh you know riots and uh you know uh, civil unrest never happens like, you know people talk about preppers living in fear about these things that never happen but they're constantly happening on, on a weekly monthly daily basis so uh, there are so many reasons to have some basic preparations and i think the idea of having a edc bag you know, let alone the idea that, you know, the power grid shuts down, there's an EMP attack and, you know, there's, you know, lawlessness in the streets. There are so many reasons to have a lot of the stuff that I'm going to talk about in this video that just improve your life on an ongoing basis. There is a story I have where I, one time I did not take this pack with me. I was at some kind of a festival and I knew it was going to be really crowded and I didn't want to be like turning around and bumping into people uh, at this festival with my backpack on. So I just left it in the car. 
and I was there with my boy and we walked to a playground and I wasn't paying attention and I kind of missed a step and scraped the whole front of my shin on a piece of wood. I still get sh uh, sh chills thinking about it and I still have a bit of a scar on my leg. And the reason for that is that I didn't bring this bag with me. So as soon as I got that um, injury, it was really bloody. It opened up a lot of uh, uh, tissue there. Uh, I was not able to wash it. I was not able to treat it and uh, sterilize it or any of that kind of stuff. I had to walk back about a mile to my car to, in order to treat it. And uh, by the time I got back to the car, I was able to clean it up, but it wasn't soon enough. And I ended up developing cellulitis, which is a bacterial infection in, the, you know, in your skin. And I had to go on antibiotics. Being a prepper, it wasn't any big deal. I already had them in my arsenal. But because I didn't have this with me, things pro uh, progressed to another level of uh, you know, problem because I wasn't able to treat the issue right away. So there are so many reasons to have an EDC pack, both for the physical endurance and exercise benefits of having it on your back, for having water when you need it, for having bandages when you need it, for ster uh, sterilization uh, abilities when you need it, uh, you know, food. There are so many reasons to have this. But in addition to that, if you were ever in a situation where there was a large scale emergency that just you know, befell you kind of out of left field, you know, totally out of the blue, you know, uh, us preppers here on uh, YouTube, you know, we're warning people about these things all the time, yet people are still going to be uh, blindsided by, uh, by them when they occur. But, you know, even myself, when I'm out, you know, I prepare for these things, but, you know, if and when there's that day when it happens, it's still going to be kind of like, wow, this is really weird. This feels surreal. And, you know, I'm glad I've got this stuff, but, you know, I still feel like I'm being a little a bit caught off guard. But having this stuff is going to take a situation that could be you know, really problematic, possibly life-threatening, and give me some potential uh, options that, uh, you know, can help me. Doesn't mean that it still won't be a life-threatening situation, but having all these extra options, having all these extra tools will give me the opportunity to make it a better situation than it could be otherwise. So I wanna hop in here, but before that, I wanna talk about the idea of, you know, you're out, and like, what do you, what do you do? Do you have a game plan? If you have kids in school in you know, your, your job, do you know how to get to your job, uh, from your job to the kid's school? Or if you have a spouse that works in another place, can you get from point uh, A instead of to point B, can you get from point A to point C? so that you can get back to point B, B, uh, point B being your house. Uh, it, it's important to be able to do that. Now we have GPS, so you know, that can kind of figure things out for us usually, but like let's, you know, what happens if you can't use your car? What happens if the roads are shut down? What happens if the GPS is fried? What if your car is fried? What if it's like an EMP or a CME, uh, CME sort of situation and you, know, you, you can't use your electronics in the car so your GPS isn't working? You, know, you can have a cell phone and there's a great app for cell phones uh, called it's Maps. ME. I'll put a little link in the, in the description below uh, to that, as well as a lot of other things that I'm going to talk about in this video. Uh, that's a great uh, app that you can put on your phone where you can download digital maps to your phone. So you don't need to have connectivity to the network. So if the network goes down, you can still have access to maps because they're downloaded physically to your phone. Now, if there's some kind of an EMP that fried your phone, you know, that's not going to do you any good, but it's pretty easy to download the app. And in the case that it actually does work and the vast majority of emergencies, it will work. Uh, you know, there's no reason not to download that app to your phone unless you're like really uh, scarce on memory on your phone. So maps.me is a great way of getting uh, regional, local maps down to the street level on your phone. So if you needed to get from point A to point C before you go back to point B, which is home, uh, you know, you're gonna have some ability to do that. Let's say your phone doesn't work. It's a great idea to have things like this. Now this is a really uh, generic uh, map set. This has like really high level maps of, of like full states, it's high highways. Now I keep this in my car if I was ever traveling somewhere far away. You know, if I can kind of get myself back to a highway, I can kind of follow that highway back. In fact, recently I traveled uh, from my home here in New England over to a, a fellow prepper on YouTube's house, Ethical Preparedness's house. He lives over in, um, I don't know if he's open with which state he lives in, but he, he lives in a Midwestern state. And my boy and I drove to his house to see the eclipse together. Uh, it was a great day. Here are some pictures of the eclipse, uh, wonderful experience. But I was always prepared for the idea that, you know, things can go sideways. And as we were driving away, I was kind of just calculating in my head, how many days would it take me to walk back from here? And at our furthest extent, I think it was something like, uh, we could probably do it in about 22 days. We could be back in 22 days. We could figure it out. Uh, you know, but if we needed to do that, having a set of maps like this, that is, you know, uh, 
you know, really, really large. It shows a lot of different uh, areas, a lot of different states. That would be helpful. This isn't going to help you in your town, though. If you just live in some small town somewhere, you know, maybe if you're within a large city that happens to be in a, a map book like this, maybe it'll help you. But if you just live in a, you know, a small town somewhere, it's important to have town-level maps and just kind of keep those in your car. You know, maybe your car doesn't work, but you can at least go back to your car and you can get your maps and you can... You know, navigate using that. That's a really critical skill. And not only it's important to own the maps, but it's also important to be able to be proficient in reading the maps. And that's something that I've never really understood with people. I don't know why there are some people that have trouble reading maps. Um, Maybe, you know, maybe it's just a skill that you kind of, uh, you know, develop over time. You know, myself, as a kid that used to grow up playing video games, there are always maps in the video games, so maybe I got trained at an early age on the idea of taking a three-dimensional surface and transposing it into a two-dimensional plane. Uh, but the ability to interpret a map and to use it and having that map, those are two things you need to pair together. So that gets you the plan of how to get from where you are to where you want to go. And you also need to have uh, multiple ideas on how you can get from point A to point B. If there is like some sort of a water crossing, a bridge uh, between you and where you need to get, what if that bridge is inaccessible? What if it is destroyed? What if it's just blocked off for security reasons? Uh, what if you know there's just traffic through a, a certain area? It's important to have multiple ideas, multiple senses of how to get from one point to another. And generally, in an emergency, whatever is the fastest way when it's not an emergency to get from point A to point B is probably going to be the slowest way to get between those two points because those are going to be the bottlenecks where everybody kind of chokes up and goes through that. So if you can stick to smaller back roads, you're probably going to do a lot better. And having those smaller regional map is going to help you to do that. So that covers how you, you know, how you decide, you know, where, how you're going to get from uh, one point to another, but then there's the logistics of actually making the journey. And that's where having the EDC bag comes in. Uh, in this bag, I've got all sorts of things from water to food. Uh, you know, there are uh, implements for starting a fire. There's clothing in here. This is an important one. If you are in an area where it's going to be very, uh, you know, warm and sunny, uh, you know, that can be a real problem. It, you know, it, it is, in addition to discomfort, you can get, you know, sunstroke or se severe sunburn. So you want to be able to cover yourself up. And there is something I've got here in this pack, way at the bottom, because I don't use it very frequently. This is a sun shirt. And uh, this is something that I can throw on and it's going to cover all my arms. It's got a little hood, which looks ridiculous on me. I look like an Oompa Loompa out of that uh, original Willy Wonka movie when the Oompa Loompas were in the, uh, uh, the television studio, <laughs> like that. I look ridiculous wearing it, but much better to have this and uh, you know, to have some kind of sun protection. I usually also carry a hat with me, which is usually my car, a broad-brimmed hat, which would protect my face. In addition to that, there's sunblock in here to try to protect me from, you know, the sun's rays. So these are just basic things. You know, when people think about, you know, the idea of emergencies, they're thinking, you know, I got to bring my AR-15 with me and I need my, you know, my, my pack rations and all that kind of stuff. But it's a lot of the basic stuff that ends up being, you know, more of a challenge for the majority of people. Also gloves, if I've got to do anything with my hands, you know, the last thing you want is start uh, tearing your hands up, especially if you're in an emergency situation, you don't want to start getting an infection because, you know, if the hospital systems aren't, uh, you know, working to, to their normal potential, and here in the United States, that's not really a particularly high bar to, to achieve, um, you know, you want to try to minimize the chances that you're going to get some kind of uh, an injury, which could turn into infection. So I've got gloves in there. This is my my medical pack, where I've got all sorts of stuff in here. Uh, there are bandages, there's a, you know, a bacitracin for treating uh, injuries. Um, that was kind of a pour through here. Just briefly, uh, there are creams for, uh, for skin. I've got some gauze for you know, uh, bleeding. Um, let's see what else. I've got some liquid bandages in here. Uh, it's just kind of stuff that I've developed over time. There's sanitizers uh, in here. Uh, I've, got, I've got this, which is a little smaller. In fact, I recently ordered uh, some larger ones. This is a uh, irrigator uh, where I can fill this up with water and use it to clean out a wound. Uh, my boy recently had gotten a head injury, actually while we were over at uh, my friend Ethical Preparedness's place. He fell over and uh, hit his head on some, some gravel. And I did not have that for irrigating the wound. And it was difficult cleaning it out. We were able to effectively do it, uh, you know, with... Uh, 
uh, cleaning water and I was kind of dripping from a height out of a, a rag. We've got rags on the top here. I sanitized everything by boiling and was using the gravity uh, force of the water to clean the wound out. It worked, but it was a lot of work to do that. If I'd had a wound irrigator, uh, that would have made my job uh, a lot easier and a lot faster. And I, I didn't even think to get that item immediately after that experience. It wasn't until I watched a Canadian Prepper video, which Canadian Prepper, all he puts out is fear porn and there's no benefit to it at all. He never teaches any skills. But somehow I was watching one of his fear porn videos and he had this doctor on and they mentioned having an irrigator for exactly that purpose. And it just got into my head. It's like, why did I not think that? Especially after just having gone through an experience where I wished I had some kind of an irrigator. So I added that to my pack. And if you create a pack like this, you're constantly gonna be adding things in and maybe even taking things out that you find that you're just not using. In fact, I had two knife sharpeners in here a while uh, for a while. Uh, one of them was more bulky, one of them was smaller. And I was recently teaching a class to kids about um, you know, just outdoor safety and things like that. And I was going through my backpack and I talked about how there's this, a knife sharpener that I just never even used. And one of the kids said, well, I'd like that. And I said, okay, well, here you go. So I gave it away. So occasionally you'll pull things out of your pack uh, as well. But it's really important to just carry stuff so you have the options. Because when I was in a situation when I did not have the option to clean my leg effectively, it ended up turning into something worse. And again, people uh, jump here onto videos like this all the time. And they're always saying things like, Nothing ever happens. You guys are just, you know, chicken little, always crying about the sky falling. Things happen all the time, even if it's just the emergency of getting thirsty. So uh, those are a couple of things, not exhaustively uh, what's in here, but a few of the things in this section. Toothbrush, you know, if you're uh, not able to get home, it's important to uh, take good care of your teeth. Uh, you know, you don't want to be getting a dental infection, again, especially in an emergency when maybe the dentist isn't going into his office because he's got, you know, more important things he has to deal with during this crisis taking care of your teeth. So toothbrush, floss, uh, toothpaste in there. Uh, got, um, this is a, not super critical, but I've got Wild Edible Plants book. Again, I'm gonna put links down in the description to, uh, below to a lot of this kind of stuff. Uh, that's something that, you know, just as you're walking through the forest, you'd be shocked. If you're not familiar with wild edible plants, you'd be shocked at how much edible stuff is out there. And you don't have to know every single wild edible and every single plant in order to safely do it. There are lots of wild edibles where nothing else looks like that plant that's dangerous. So you can kind of freely nibble at this thing and not feel like, you know, you may not have exactly the right plant, but you know that there's no poisonous lookalikes of that plant. So once you start learning a lot of stuff, you can really augment like the food that I have in here. If I was walking through the woods, I'd have the food in here, plus all the food naturally around me. Now, during an emergency is not the best time to be uh, you know, learning that stuff. You should kind of practice that stuff ahead of time. But I, I always keep that book in there in case I come up across a new plant and I think, hey, I think I've seen this before, but I want to double check. I have the book in there. It also, it's extra weight for more exercise. This is a small solar panel that charges four AA batteries, I'm sorry, four yeah, AA batteries. And these um, batteries form a battery bank, which I can then use to charge electronic devices like a cell phone or something like that if it's still functioning. Carry this with me all the time. It's very small. It takes a long time to charge up with such a small panel like this, but if it was any bigger, I wouldn't bring it with me. So I put that in there so it's at least a little bit of something. In this section here, I've got uh, things like uh, lighters and matches. You know, matches are kind of like the, the go-to a lot of times for preppers, but lighters are a lot uh, quicker and easier to use. And you get a, a ton of fire starts out of a lighter. I keep it in a little Mylar bag just to keep it clean in there. So I've got both of them. I also got a magnesium fire starter if I wanted that. Uh, if you're in an area that's very buggy, we've got a bug net, which uh, you know can prevent uh, illness from happening if you get bit by a bug. But in addition to that, it just makes your experience so much better. Prepping is not all about just not dying. Eventually we're all gonna die. Prepping is about making the journey more comfortable, whether it makes it so that you're not thirsty, whether you're not hungry, whether you're not doing this the entire time. Here in New England, we have really horrible bugs. Let me know down in the description below if you think you got worse bugs than us, but I, we could give you a run for your money. I go outside right now and it's deer fly season and they're on you right away. Having a broad brimmed hat, uh, by the way, is a great way of kind of confusing bugs. A lot of times those biting flies come from the top behind you. I don't know, that's their evolutionary training. That's what they wanna do. You wear a broad brimmed hat, it really helps a lot to kind of confuse them. But if you want that extra level, you can get a, uh, a bug net. 
In addition to that, I'm not going to open it up, but what I've got in here is a, fall, a small fold-up N95 mask. That is useful for, you know, if you were in a situation where there was a, you know, a illness going around, uh, you know, I think you wouldn't really get caught off guard by that. But let, you know, let's say you have to walk through a hospital or something like that. You might want to throw something like that on if there's sick people everywhere. But uh, beyond that, just wildfire, smoke. Uh, you know, ash in the air, if there was an explosion, there could be particulates up in the air. Good to have something like that. Okay, I'm gonna close up this section. That's not everything that's in there. I'm just trying to give you guys kind of a basic view of what I got in here. Right on the top, I've got multiple, oh, this one came untied, multiple bandanas. These come in handy for all sorts of things, whether it's, uh, you know, just cleaning yourself up or like I mentioned for wound care, I was able to use those. Covering areas up, washing, you know, there's all sorts of reasons for having bandanas. Also, rope. And cordage I keep on here. These are actually just a whole bunch of old shoelaces. Uh, I mentioned the water uh, on the side there. Over here, I've got a couple different things. I've got a flashlight and I've got a monocular. Uh, I actually bought this when my boy was in a outdoor preschool because I wanted to be able to see the expression on his face when, he was, when I was in the parking lot to make sure he was having a good time. Uh, and he was. So uh, that's why I bought this, but I keep it in here. And there's all sorts of reasons why you might want to be able to see something at distance that you might not be safe to approach. If there's civil unrest or something like that, you may want to be able to look into an area without actually having to go into it yourself. Uh, and I frequently will just use it for, uh, for animal watching. When I'm out, it, it, it adds enjoyment to my life to be able to kind of reach out and really see animals close up. So again, a lot of this stuff, it's not just for... Uh, you know, avoiding death, it's for enjoying your life a little bit more. Uh, in this pocket, I've got lots of food in the form of uh, Cliff uh, granola bars. I find that these have a really long shelf life. They don't seem to uh, care about being left in my uh, pack, even when it's hot in there. Uh, so, you know, those have kind of uh, won the test of time with me. I've got, oh, I've got to refill this. It's getting low. This is uh, crystallized ginger. Uh, I use this. Uh, it helps with nausea. If you ever have nausea, have some candy ginger and it knocks it out really quickly, uh, surprisingly quickly for something that's not like a medicine. It's a uh, you know, really, uh, really, really potent way of knocking out nausea. I use this a lot if my boy gets uh, motion sick while we're driving in the car. What else do we got in here? Um, we have uh, potassium iodide. Is it iodide? I forget. Well, it's uh, KI tablets. A potassium iodine tablets. Uh, you know, if there was a radiological event, you could pop one of these and it'll protect your thyroid, not protect any other parts of you necessarily, but protect your thyroid anyway. Uh, in here, I've got my favorite fire starter, which is a Fresno lens. So I, there are infinite fire starts with this as long as you got sun out. Something like this starts fires really, really easy, especially if you have some, um, uh, some black embers to start with. Really, really great way of starting fires. Super easy, super fast, never runs out of fuel as long as the sun's still there. We've got in uh, this section, I've got a headlamp. I have a flashlight and a headlamp. Headlamps are great, uh, you know, when you're actually in the dark and you need to have your hands free. I love using headlamps. This is a lock pick kit. You need not just a lock pick kit, but the ability to use it. I can tell you from experience, you buy one of these and it's not a, uh, an automatic that you know what you're doing. Oftentimes you buy one of these and they'll come with a practice lock that you can uh, try to pick. And I'll tell you, those are a heck of a lot easier to pick than you know, regular locks you're going to find out there. Maybe that's by design so people uh, don't get frustrated with it and they think, oh, this lock pick uh, kit works really great. Uh, you know, if you ever buy one of these and you get the, uh, the lock that uh, comes with the kit to practice on, practice on some real locks and you're going to find out, you know, it's, it's not as easy as it seems when you just start, uh, you know, with the, uh, the practice kit. Uh, I've also got some uh, glow sticks in here. You got to be careful with these. You don't crack them. That's why they're in this section where they're not likely to be flexed or anything. Uh, and that's just another way of getting light if uh, electronic devices weren't working for some reason. I'm going to close up that section. And uh, that kind of concludes this area here. I, I'm skipping by some things here and there. I, I've got a, a knife sharpener in there that I, I'll, I'll sometimes use on, on my blade. Uh, the front section gets into things I, I tend to use a little bit more frequently. I've got my favorite knife here. It's just a flip out knife um, that's just really good in the hand. Keeps a nice uh, sharp edge on it. Uh, knife sharpener's in there. Little thing, just a tripod. <laughs> I want to take, uh, take pictures uh, somewhere uh, outside. Um, that's, that's all that's in there. Because, again, this is like my life uh, pack, not just my emergency pack. I've got my camera that I use when I go out, take pictures of my boy. Radios, keep in contact. If I need to split up with my boy when we go out somewhere, uh, that we can put these on the same channel and we can keep in touch with, with each other. I've used these on occasion, uh, you know, just 
they're kind of like training wheels for you know uh, spending time apart. Uh, super cheap and a great addition to any pack. These are made by uh, TID. These are pretty good radios. I did some reviews on these. I'm gonna put a link down in the description below, maybe a card up here to um, the review I did on these radios. They got a good throw. This is just the, those, that family radio service, uh, like FRS uh, frequency, but they go like a good three quarters of a mile, even through uh, thick woods. So I was pretty impressed by those. So that's why I keep these in my pack all the time. I'll usually put my cell phone in here when I go out. Here's something that uh, gets used a lot. This is a, uh, a tool for eating. You know, we, if you have the emergency that you go to the grocery store and you buy ice cream with your boy and you don't have a spoon, that's an emergency. <laughs> and that's, that's what we got, uh, got that there for. So, I mean, that gets used frequently. Uh, we've got some uh, medication here. I've got some ibuprofen, which I'm thinking about swapping out to acetaminophen because acetaminophen has better uh, shelf life. I've also got some aspirin in here. Aspirin does not have a very long shelf life either, but uh, that has benefits for like anti-clotting. Uh, so that's why I have that in here. Uh, and I've also got this, which I think is something people maybe don't think about so frequently. <laughs> Again, more matches. I just throw these things everywhere. I've got a little thumb drive. And this is a 16 gigabyte thumb drive. And this has critical life information. Like uh, it's got scans of social security cards on there. It's got you know, different legal documents. Um, you know, all sorts of information is on that drive that uh, like, you know, I might need during an emergency. There's, there's addresses. I've even got like scanned maps of um, danger zones and you know, uh, you know, nuclear radiation uh, sort of uh, emergency areas where there are nuclear power plants. I've just got a lot of information that I keep on that drive. Now, if I'm just hiking through the woods, ain't gonna be any opportunity to use that thing. But if I get back to somewhere where I do have access to a computer, it'll give me the option to access that information. If I didn't have it in here at all, I don't even have the option. And that little thumb drive is so small and so light and so cheap, really, it's an easy uh, add to throw it in there. Uh, what else we got in here? Oh, okay, I've got a backup camera for family photos, which isn't really an emergency item, but you know, it comes up a fair bit. A few more things I've got in here uh, that I use on a, a frequent basis. One, on the side, I've got sunglasses. Again, if it's super sunny, you, know, you can get yourself a headache, uh, you know, not having the ability to filter the light. So I keep the sunglasses right there on the side. I've got a compass out here and that pretty much wraps it up except for I've got one fixed blade knife on the side which is always accessible on the outside. There's a SOG knife. Uh, I like SOG products in general. This SOG knife though it was really hard in the hand like the edges on this uh, knife were really kind of sharp so what I did is I, I took this uh, fabric uh, strip and I wrapped it around it and then glued it down so it gives me some padding when I'm holding that. Uh, but overall, I do like SOG products. Uh, I like their, uh, I've got a, um, a larger knife that I take camping with me, and I've got a collapsible shovel of theirs that I, I think is really great. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about, and I've saved this for last intentionally, is the idea of self-protection. If you are moving through an area during an emergency, people lose their shit pretty quickly, depending on the circumstance. And if you're walking through an area where people are losing their shit, you want to be able to, you know, get through that area without, uh, you know, uh, succumbing to their lack of preparedness and their lack of mental um, ability to cope with the situation. And for that reason, uh, I will always carry uh, a handgun on me. Uh, I have a license to do this in my state. Some states you, I'm going to say you need licenses, but I think constitutionally, I don't know whether the word need uh, is appropriate to say that you need a license because I think that the Constitution is all the license you really need. Uh, that said, I do follow the laws, constitutional or not, in my state and I am licensed to carry this. Uh, and this is a really small firearm. This is a Ruger LCP pistol. And there's nothing in the chamber right now. There's six rounds in the magazine. I always keep it empty. I know that some people uh, think that that's a foolish uh, situation because when you need this, you're going to need it quickly. Uh, my feeling on it is that it's one extra level of safety that you can uh, have when you have a firearm on you that, uh, you know, you keep it uh, without a, a round in the chamber. And if I was in a situation where I felt like there was a higher chance of danger being present, this would come out, a round would be put in the chamber, and then it would be put away. Uh, but for normal circumstances, I feel like there's a greater danger of having a round in the chamber than of not having a round in the chamber. So that's what, the way I do it, but that's just a personal preference. The reason that I carry this is just for the situation where, you know, God forbid, it might be 
required. My hope would be that just having this alone without even having to fire it would be enough because this is not a very comfortable fi uh, firearm to shoot. And the idea of injuring some someone, anyone, even if someone is trying to do your harm, is something that I want to avoid in my life. I have been in a, cer a certain number of circumstances where I have needed to kill an animal, and it, you know, I just, I have a compassionate heart, uh, you know, even if an animal is trying to do me harm, uh, or a person is trying to do me harm, uh, you know, I don't wish any ill will towards anybody, and once you pull the trigger, you can't, you can't unpull it. It's a huge responsibility having one of these, and uh, I think a lot of times people don't realize the responsibility that is inherent. I, I don't even like having the magazine in there while I, while I hold it, I'm talking about it. It's a huge responsibility having one of these, and even if you use it uh, completely appropriately, where you're using it to defend your life from a, uh, you know, a life-threatening situation being created by somebody else, uh, you know, there are negative psychological components that come with that because we are human beings and we have consciences and, you know, maybe there are some people out there that are sociopaths and don't, uh, don't and wouldn't ever suffer from that, but, you know, you know, I do. And uh, this is something I take really, really seriously and this is an absolute last line of defense and my hope would be just the fact of holding it at somebody, that would be enough to, uh, you know, diffuse this, uh, the situation and, um, you know, it doesn't come to a level where you actually have to discharge uh, the, uh, the firearm. In addition to the fact that it only holds six uh, rounds in there, and in the, uh, where did I put the, uh, in the uh, holder that I've got here, which is kind of a nice one, I can have one other six round magazine. Now, uh, six rounds is not that much. This uh, firearm is not super accurate. This is not my favorite firearm in the world. In fact, it's probably the least favorite firearm that I own. But the reason that I, uh, carry this with me as opposed to anything else that I own is that it's so small and I just know realistically if I was going to be required to carry something much larger than this there'd be a lot of trips where I just wouldn't want to take it uh, in the state in which I'm in you can't open carry unless you're hunting out in the middle of the woods you know you can't open carry in the grocery store uh, again uh, you know that's the laws of the state whether they're constitutional or not I think that's up for debate but uh, you know those are the laws of the state and I want to follow the laws in the state in which I'm in so, uh, you know, open carry not being an option, it's a lot harder for me to conceal something larger than this. You know, even a Glock, which is another firearm that I own, uh, you know, on a, on a small guy like me, it's, uh, you know, it's not that easy to hide something like that and it's not super comfortable. This just slides into my pocket and again, my hope is that I never have to use it and the furthest that things ever go is maybe having to point it in some direction to diffuse the threat, uh, you know, uh, just then and there. Um, so that's why I carry such a small, you know, n it, it, yeah, <laughs> awkward, tiny little uh, handgun, which is not very comfortable to shoot in your hands. If you look at the, uh, if you look at the, uh, how much uh, you can actually uh, hold on your hand there, that's all that is actually uh, absorbing the blow into your hand. So it's really, it's, it's putting all the kickback into a really small section of your hand. It's not a very comfortable uh, firearm to shoot. Uh, but it's small, and if it was any bigger, I know I wouldn't take it with me. Uh, but I think it's important to have some kind of uh, means of self-defense, whether it's this or pepper spray or some other means that's uh, legal to you, some way of defending yourself or at least putting up a show of force that you could defend yourself from people so that hopefully you know, people might uh, back down and you can just avoid the confrontation entirely because the, the most successful confrontation that you can be in with anyone is one that you can avoid ever happening because even if you come out uh, the winner in uh, some kind of a gun or knife or whatever fight, you know, almost it's very rare for someone to suffer no injuries at all, uh, the least of which being, uh, you know, potentially psychological. So, um, you know, just having uh, the ability to, you know, put up some sort of a, uh, a display that force is can be brought to the table, hopefully could just uh, diffuse things before they ever go farther than that. But the most critical thing, uh, you know, beyond all of this stuff, the individual items in here, is to have some kind of a plan in your mind for what you would do if you were out. Uh, just having that uh, plan in the back of your head uh, will make you more mentally ready to execute some kind of a plan. If you were at the grocery store and suddenly there's some kind of emergency, you have to walk home for whatever reason, 
having thought of it ahead of time is going to put you that much uh, farther ahead in the game than if you are just kind of starting cold and you haven't even mentally gotten yourself to a situation where you, you know, have even gamed any of this stuff out. So start gaming these things out in your head. Put yourself uh, together some kind of an EDC pack. I think that something like this is, would be really, really uh, invaluable during an emergency situation. But even during regular day-to-day -day life, you know, the emergency of being thirsty, being hungry, the emergency of, I wish I could be exercising right now with some extra weight on my back, but I don't have a backpack on. You know, there are so many benefits to uh, carrying something like this with you all the time, uh, you know, from health, to thirst, to hunger, to boo-boos, and all that kind of thing. I, the way I think about it uh, is apparent is it's kind of like, like a mommy bag or a dad bag. You know, you have all those kind of things. It started when there were diapers in here, and it's kind of progressed from there to all the basic kind of things you might need to address while you're out, plus having a few things that might be required only in the case of an emergency. That's it. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, I've got links down in the description below to a lot of things that I talked about, uh, you know, during this video, both in the backpack and also like idea related, like a map uh, uh, app that I uh, have on my phone. Um, if you have any other ideas that you think would be a, a good addition to this, I'm always adapting and changing this bag, and I know other people might like to hear your input as well. So if you have additions or subtractions that you think would be uh, good to implement on this bag or other people's bag, I'd love to hear those in the comments below as well. That's it and thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.